Okay, let's talk about color correction in HitFilm 4 Express. I've got three clips down here on the timeline and I've duplicated each one so we can see a before and after I've applied some color correction. So let's quickly just go through so you can see the benefit that color correction brings. Okay, so we've got the dog on the beach before and after color correction. I'm just pressing page down here to skip to the next clip on the timeline. Here I've got the view out of an airplane window. That's LA with the Channel Islands in the background. Before color correction and after. And here I've got a Channel Islands fox. Before color correction and after. Okay, so hopefully you can see the benefit that color correction brings. But before we can reach this endpoint, we first need to figure out how we're going to describe our images to find out how they can be enhanced, how they can look more realistic and also how we can help guide our viewers attention towards the most important part of the image. So let's take a look at this first example here of the dog on the beach. Now I'd say it's a little bit overexposed but I'd say its main issue is that it's actually quite low contrast which I had very little control over. Uh, there was a lot of sea breeze blowing in which is lowering the contrast of the scene and there are several things that tell us that it's low contrast. First of all, areas that are supposed to be a pure black, like this woman's um, clothing here, maybe some details in the seaweed and some details in the side of the cliff there, rather than being pure black, they're kind of a washed out tone of gray um, or a, a lighter tone. So that tells us that the values, the darker values in this image are hanging above where they should be. Uh, the second clue is that the colors in the scene are not really popping out very much. The green is kind of muted and the blue of this guy's t-shirt is also quite muted as well. So let's take a look at how we can fix those two things and make the image stand out a little bit more. So let's head over to the effects panel and then under the folder called color correction, just twirl that down and you'll have a whole bunch of options. Now at the top you've got auto color, auto contrast and auto levels. I always suggest that you try out one of these first uh, because if it works then you don't need to do anything else or you just do some minor adjustments and move on or if it doesn't then we'll go on to some more manual uh, adjustments. So let's try auto color and see what that does. Now you can see it's added a lot of blue into the image, it's not really working out for us. I prefer the original um, so I'm going to remove that. You can see we're now on the controls tab for the clip selected in the timeline and we're under effects so we can see all the effects we've added so just select it and get rid of it. So I'm going to go back to effects I'm going to try auto contrast. That's looking a lot better. It's added a lot, lot of contrast but we've lost some detail in the dog there. You can see that it's kind of overexposed um, so I'm going to get rid of that as well. Um, and finally let's try auto levels and again, it's added a lot of blue, so I'm going to get rid of that. So what we're going to have to do is try and manually adjust this clip. So what I'm going to, I'm going to go down to Levels and Histogram. I'm going to bring that across to this clip. Go to the Controls tab, open up Effects, open up the Levels Histogram effect. And I'm just going to take this little slider that controls the input blacks you can see it's this, also this slider here, it's the same thing. And what you want to do is you want to slide that just to the get where your information starts to hit, start hitting the histogram here. And as you can see, as I pull that over, the blacks drop down quite dramatically and the whole contrast of the image uh, improves. So I'm just going to put that around there perhaps. Okay, so that's kind of got us part way to towards solving this issue of the, the blacks not being true black. The, the tones in this woman's clothing here have dropped down and some details in the plants have dropped down as well so it's looking a lot more contrasty. And the, the other problem we talked about was that the colors weren't really popping. So let's go back to effects and let's choose this hue, saturation and lightness and bring that over onto the clip as well. Let's open up that effect and let's open up the master control. The control that we're interested in here is saturation and saturation talks about how vibrant colors are within the scene. So let's use this slider to just 
increase the saturation a little bit and you can see the greens are starting to pop out the blues are popping out of the image as well but if we bring this too far it starts to look really unnatural so I'm going to bring that back to around 40. The way you can use all these adjustments is you you push it up somewhere and if it's too much then half the difference and if it's not enough then you half the difference again you know and you keep on making smaller and smaller changes to the adjustment until you get it just where you need it to be. It will be different for each clip that you tackle. Um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty good improvement from the original you can see on the left. It's not over contrasty, it's not over saturated, and it really draws your attention to the Unleashed Dog, which is the whole point of this, this um, image. Okay, let's move on to the second example. We've got the view out of an airplane window here, and I horrendously kind of underexposed it because I was worried about this area here blowing out and I shouldn't have in retrospect I shouldn't have worried because it still blew out even still there's no detail there and it's not really a very interesting part of the frame so I should have just let it blow out in order to get the details in the foreground um, but let's see how we can try and fix this in hit film so let's go back to effects and under color correction uh, oh I need to select the clip in the timeline and I'm just going to try an auto color here and I can see that's a massive improvement from the original if I go to the media and just select that clip so you can get the before and after you can see that's a massive improvement I'd say I'm not too keen on this kind of extra red that the effect has pushed into the image you can see it's kind of looking a bit red down there so I'm going to select the clip go to controls so we've just got our auto color that we've added and um, to reduce that kind of redness that it's brought in down there I'm just going to blend with the original just a little bit until it looks a little better so we're bringing some of this how it looked before through uh, the new effect and blending the two together so it just looks a little bit more natural okay I'm pretty happy with that and if you compare what it was like before I think it looks substantially better. We've got more detail in the foreground and it draws our attention towards the most interesting parts which are all the suburbia here of LA, the LA River and the Channel Islands in the background. Okay, so let's move on to the final example. This clip has the opposite problem in that it's overexposed and I'd been watching these foxes on the Channel Islands for about two days and they weren't really doing much other than taking naps and scavenging off people's campsites and then all of a sudden I saw this guy eating a, a dead bird and it was the most interesting thing I'd seen them do so rather than spend the extra time getting my exposure down because I knew I was going to miss the action uh, I just decided to record and as I've been telling you guys content trumps quality every time as long as you've got good content in there uh, don't worry if it's not perfect like perfectly shot but there are some things that we can do to improve this image once we've shot it um, so let's go to uh, effects and rather than trying any of the auto controls this time I'm just going to jump straight into the manual controls the main thing that's wrong with it is that it's too bright it's the opposite problem to the previous clip in fact let me just pull up that one so we've got a side by side um, so back to effects let's I'm going to put in the brightness and contrast adjustment first. I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to take down the brightness quite a bit. So around there. But something funny is happening. It's kind of the, the image is looking a little more kind of dull through doing that. So I'm just going to go back to effects and I'm going to get our levels histogram again and bring that over as well. Now if I just right click on the brightness and reset I can do that with any of these things by the way if you make a mistake just reset it or reset everything start again. Uh, I'm going to open up the levels histogram and now I'm going to go back to brightness contrast and you'll see as I move the brightness down not only is the image improving but you can see the histogram moving as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down until the 
the peak of this histogram is just to the right of the center. Once I'm around there, I'm going to move this highlight input or input white slider. You can see it's also moving down here. I'm just going to put that at the beginning or right where the white values in the histogram end, which is around there. And you can see it's just adding a little bit of punchiness. If I just turn that effect off, it's taking that dullness away that we added by reducing the brightness. So you can see by reducing the kind of exposure of the image, we've brought out a lot more color in the fox's coat. It's a lot more kind of contrasty. And I'd say we don't need to make any more um, improvements to the contrast, mainly because I shot it in midday. You can see the shadow of the ear is directly underneath, but unfortunately animals don't wait around for good lighting in order to do interesting stuff. So you just have to deal with what you've got. So I'm going to just adjust that a little, a little more. Okay, I think there was one final thing that I could do to this. I'm going to use crushed blacks and whites here. I'm going to put that onto the clip as well. Let's open that up. And using the black adjustment, I'm just going to crush the blacks a little more so I get a real kind of punchy look in the fox's coat. And it reduces some of these shadow tones in the background as well. So hopefully now you can see that by making this um, adjustment, we've kind of drawn our attention towards the main part of the frame, whereas before we had all these really bright sections which were distracting us, and it was kind of a little bit more difficult to figure out what was going on. Whereas this way, we've in increased the contrast, we've got the exposure down to a more reasonable level, and I'd say that's quite a usable shot now.